How's it going, people? Oh, happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm not real big on saints, but any excuse to drink is uh, worth pursuing, I guess. Speaking of which, here's an excuse to drink that I can get behind. We are up to uh, chapter 8 of Mosiah. And since it's St. Patrick's Day, I thought I'd have a little something green. Something else green, I mean. Mmm, nice and green. Oh, okay. Let's get started. Cheers. Uh, uh, that was nice. And it came to pass that after King Limhi had made an end of speaking to his people, for he spake many things unto them, and only a few of them have I written in this book. Thanks. <sighs> He told his people all the things concerning their brethren uh, who were in the land of Zarahemla. And he caused that Ammon should stand up before the multitude and rehearse unto them all that had happened unto their brethren from the time that Zenith went up out of the land even until the time that he himself had come up out of the land. And he also rehearsed unto them the last words which King Benjamin, Benji the Downer, uh, had taught them. He taught them all about their nothingness, I believe, and how unprofitable these worthless, filthy creatures are. I can see why they need to hear that. Because <laughs> they're feeling a little too too self-sufficient. So bring them down some notches. Yeah. Explain them to the people of King Limhi so that they might understand all the words which he spake about their being worthless and nothing. And it came to pass that after he had done all this, that King Limhi dismissed the multitude and caused that they should return every one unto his own house. That's it for the drinks, I believe. Unless I missed something in my pre-highlighting. <sighs> and it came to pass that he caused that the plates which contained the record of his people from the time that they left the land of Zarahemla should be brought before Ammon that he might read them. Now, as soon as Ammon had read the record, the king inquired of him to know if he could interpret the languages, and Ammon told him that he could not. And the king said unto him, Being grieved for the afflictions of my people, I cause that forty and three of my people should take a journey into the wilderness, that thereby they might find the land of Zarahemla, and they really got lost. <laughs> More than 40 days even, I'll bet. Uh, that they might appeal unto our brethren and deliver us up out of a bondage. And they were lost in the wilderness. I knew it. 
for the space of many days. Because we're out of magic numbers, so <laughs> many. Uh, yet they were diligent and found not the land of Zarahemla. Then they weren't that diligent. They'd still be looking until they... <laughs> they were somewhat diligent. <laughs> but returned to this land, having traveled in a land amongst many waters, having discovered a land which was covered with bones of men and beasts, and was also covered with ruins of buildings of every kind, having discovered a land which had been peopled with a people who were as numerous as the hosts of Israel. Yeah, this is the uh, Jaredites. They all killed each other off. Imagine that. They were, uh, they got scattered when uh, the languages got confounded and they came to America. Story in the back. But I'll give you a little heads up. This is the ruined cities of these people. Now, God, how long ago was that Tower of Babel story compared to 121 B.C.? Two, three thousand years, four thousand years? How long? Just wondering. Because those ruined ruins are, are much older than the Nephite ruins, and we can't find them at all. They just don't make ruins like they used to. <laughs> just a little point I was making. <sighs> uh, and for a testimony that the things that they had said are true, they have brought 24 plates, which are filled with engravings and are of pure gold. Because the uh, Jaredites had the same ideas. <laughs> And we'll read the contents of those plates in the last chapter. <laughs> and behold, also they have brought breastplates, which are large, <clears throat> and they are of brass and of copper. I thought brass was like copper and nickel together. More copper. And are perfectly sound. And again, they have brought swords, the hilts thereof have perished, and the blades thereof were cankered with rust, and there is no one in the land that is able to interpret the language or the engravings that are on the plate. Therefore I said unto thee, Canst thou translate? And I said uh, again, uh, wait, and I said unto thee again, knowest thou of any one that can translate? Now that you put it that way. <laughs> For I am desirous that these records should be translated into our language. For perhaps they will give us a knowledge of the remnant uh, uh remnant of the people who have been destroyed. Uh, uh, from, then, uh, from whence these records came, or perhaps they will give us a knowledge of this very people who have been destroyed, and I am desirous to know the cause of their destruction. should have drank the destruction. <laughs> now Ammon said unto him, I can assuredly tell thee, O king, of a man that can translate the records. For he has uh, wherewith uh, that he can look and translate all records that are of ancient date. Just like Joseph Smith, huh? And it is a gift from God. And the things are called interpreters. <laughs> and no man can look in them except he be commanded, lest he should look for that he ought not, and he should perish. 
For whosoever is commanded to look in them, the same is called a seer. And behold, the king of the people, uh, who are in the land of Zarahemla, is the man that is commanded to do these things, and who has uh, this high gift from God? A high gift. <laughs> and the king said that a seer is greater than a prophet. I thought they were the same thing. I'm going to learn something. And Ammon said that a seer is a revelator and a prophet also. So they are the same thing. And a gift which is greater can no man have. <laughs> Except he should possess the power of God. Which no man can. Why'd you bring it up, Biatch? <laughs> Yet a man may have great power given him from God. But a seer can know the things which are past and also the things which are to come. And by them shall all things be revealed, or rather shall secret things be made manifest. And hidden things shall come to light, and things which are not known shall be made known by them. And also things shall be made known by them which otherwise should not be known. <laughs> Thus God has provided a means that man, through faith, might work mighty miracles. Therefore he becometh a great benefit to his fellow beings. And now when Ammon had made an end of speaking these words, the king rejoiced exceedingly. And gave thanks to God, saying, Doubtless a great mystery is contained within these plates. And these interpreters were doubtless prepared for the purpose of enfolding all such mysteries, Gandalf. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, to the children of men. <laughs> oh, how marvelous are the works of the Lord! And how long doth he suffer with his people? who he made not so great, now he's pissed that they're not so great. <laughs> Yea, and how blind and impenetrable are the understandings of the children of men, for they will not seek wisdom. Sure they do. Why do you think they get in all these cults? <laughs> they seek wisdom and find stupidness. But it's good stupidness, apparently. <laughs> Give us your money. We'll make you super. <laughs> For they will... Uh... For they will not seek wisdom, neither do they desire that she should rule over them. Yea, they are as a wild flock, which fleeth from the shepherd, and scattereth, and are driven and are devoured by the beasts of the forest. And that's the end of chapter 8. Fucking fascinating, wasn't it? We learned one thing. The Jaredites wrote on gold plates, and they made better ruins. They have better bones, too. Because the Nephites and the Zarahemlites and all that shit, uh, they're finding all these cities of ruined ruins and Scattered bones of beast and man, and swords, and breastplates of brass. And, and they could find all that shit. And that was from the Tower of Babel. Genesis. And they're practically in New Testament times. I mean... <laughs> I mean, we're almost up to the Book of Maccabees time. So anyway, I will see you guys in verse 9. And who knows... Maybe between then and now, they'll find an artifact in North America you know, <laughs> that's. We'll prove this. Peace the fuck out.
and have a wonderful whatever the fuck you're having.